Good evening, you're watching The World is One News. My name is Mohammed Saleh and let's start with the headlines at the top of the hour. There's been yet another twist to Pakistan politics. Wife of Nawaz Sharif, the ousted Prime Minister of the country, will be contesting the special parliamentary elections, files papers for her candidacy. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj and the Bhutanese Foreign Minister meet in Nepal. They call for a peaceful resolution of the Doklam standoff. Amidst the North Korean crisis erupting every now and then, US President Donald Trump tweets that his military solutions are fully in place just in case North Korea acts unwisely. Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister, Chief Minister meets Prime Minister Narendra Modi, discusses the special status for her state, says that there should be no meddling with Article 370. So let's start with some breaking news which is just coming in where a madrasa in an area called Chaab of Afghanistan has been attacked by gunmen. Ten people are reported to have been killed and about 20 others have been injured. This is the breaking news that's, that's coming in where it is a madrasa which has now come under attack by gunmen. It's not very clear who are these gunmen who have attacked a madrasa. In, in Afghanistan, Madrasa is essentially a place of religious learning which has now come under attack in Afghanistan in a place called Cha'ab in Talukhan. Uh, no one has claimed responsibility for this attack so far. Ten people have been killed, 20 others are reported to be injured in this dastardly attack that has taken place in Afghanistan. Now, gunmen reportedly attacked Madrasa in Afghanistan in the Cha'ab area. Ten people have been killed, 20 others injured. There's more information that is expected on this breaking development that's, that's just come to light. It's still not very clear as to who this gunman is. Was it the Taliban or was it another agency which, which perhaps has resorted to an attack of this nature? It's still not very clear, but more information is awaited on this story. And also in the latest development that is coming up in the North Korean crisis, U.S. President Donald Trump has now says that his military solutions are in place. Now he's warned Kim Jong-un not to act unwisely as tensions get ratcheted up. Now this is the tweet that Donald Trump has put in. He has said military solutions are now fully in place, locked and loaded, should North Korea act unwisely. Now this is yet another warning clearly um, given out by Donald Trump. Hopefully Kim Jong-un will find another path. So this is the upping of the ante from, from the side of Donald Trump where he has now said that military solutions are in place just in case North Korea were to decide to act unwisely. And also the European Union has extended sanctions against North Korea after UN Security Council imposed fresh sanctions on the isolated nation over its latest missile tests. Now, the EU added nine people and four entities to its North Korea sanctions list. Now, the Council of the European Union said that the new sanctions also target North Korea's foreign trade bank. Now, the European Union Council on its website has stated that the decision brings the total number of people under restrictive measures to 62 people and 50 entities as listed by the United Nations. So what should China's stand be in the standoff between the United States and North Korea? Well, China should remain neutral if North Korea attacks the United States first, says a Chinese newspaper. Now, the state-run newspaper Global Times has also suggested that if the United States have ever were to carry out a unilateral first attack on, the, on North Korea to overthrow North Korea's regime, then China should step in and stop that from happening. Now, the newspaper writes, and I quote, it needs to be made clear to all sides and to make them understand 
that when their actions jeopardize China's interests, then China will respond with a firm hand, unquote. Now, China is North Korea's most important ally and also its biggest trading partner and has called for calm between two countries. Now, earlier, President Donald Trump had ratcheted up his rhetoric towards North Korea warning Pyongyang against attacking Guam or the U.S. allies after Pyongyang disclosed plans to fire missiles near the U.S. island of Guam. The U.S. Navy destroyer has carried out a freedom of navigation operation within 12 nautical miles of China-built island in South China Sea on Thursday. Now, the operation came as President Trump seeks China's cooperation against North Korea and could affect the efforts to secure a common stand. Now, according to reports, this is the third freedom of navigation operation which was conducted by the U.S. on Thursday. And also according to reports, the Chinese military told the U.S. ship to turn around at least 10 times. Now, the operation is being seen as the latest attempt by the United States to challenge Beijing's efforts to limit freedom of navigation in the strategic waters of the South China Sea. The China, China's defense ministry has released a statement stating that two of Chinese warships had jumped into action and had warned the U.S. ship to leave. The ministry has also labeled the move as a provocation that seriously can harm the mutual trust between the United States and China. Well, moving on to some news from the South American continent where the Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro wants a face-to-face -face interaction with U.S. President Donald Trump. Now, while addressing the newly elected Constituent Assembly, President Maduro said that he wants a personal conversation with the U.S. President when the two leaders attend a session of the U.N. General Assembly next month in New York. The United States has imposed a wave of sanctions against Venezuela. The Trump administration recently slapped sanctions on eight Venezuelan politicians and security figures, which also includes Maduro. Now, the sanctions freeze United States assets of these officials and also bans them from traveling to the United States and for carrying out any business activity with the Americans. Now, earlier, similar sanctions were imposed on Venezuela as President Maduro pushed for the election of the Constituent Assembly which is a new constitutional body which the opposition parties allege removes the checks and balances on the president's powers to ch make changes in the constitution. Well, at a time when the gender pay gap is receiving attention globally, a cafe in Australia has taken things up a notch, finding a unique way to raise awareness about pay disparity. More in this report. <laughs> Alexandria O'Brien, the owner of a cafe in Australia, has found a way to raise awareness about the gender pay gap, but with a twist. One week in every month, she charges male customers an 18% surcharge on their orders, and this is why. One week out of every month, we have an 18% premium for men, which is the same amount as the gender pay gap. So far, customers have welcomed the idea, calling it a brilliant way of drawing attention to the existing disparity that not too many know about. I could wear that, yeah, considering that there is a fair, yeah, it's a fairly unequal pay gap between men and women. Even though that there is supposedly equal pay, it doesn't, it doesn't really equate out there. The Handsome Her Cafe lies in the Melbourne suburb of Burnswick. O'Brien says to keep things kosher, she's made sure that the surcharge is not compulsory. If people aren't comfortable with paying it or men don't want to pay it, we're not going to kick them out the door. Like it's, it's just a good opportunity to do some good. Reports suggest that it will take civil service more than 37 years to achieve pay equality between men and women. Innovations like this can be considered baby steps towards bringing about a parity at a date a little sooner than the one projected. Bureau Report, we on. Well, after the United States on war, now a Canadian diplomat has been treated for mysterious headaches and hearing loss in the Cuban capital of Havana. Meanwhile, the Canadian Foreign Ministry has ordered for an investigation into this very mysterious incident. Earlier, the United States had also claimed that its diplomats in Havana had experienced a strange physical symptom. Now, according to reports, the diplomats could have been targeted by some sonic device that causes hearing loss. The Cuban government has denied any wrongdoing on its part and the Cuban Foreign Ministry has also launched its own investigation after it was informed of the incidents. 
However, the United States has ordered for the removal of two Cuban envoys from Washington in retaliation. Now, taking a big step towards organ transplantation from animals to humans, researchers in the United States have created a gene-edited piglet which has been cleansed of viruses that cause disease in the humans. Now, the experiment reported in the journal Science is a crucial step towards building a technology that will enable organ transplant from pigs to humans. The Harvard geneticist Dr. George Church, who led the experiments, has said that the first pig-to-human transplants could occur within the next two years. And also, according to reports, there have been as many as 33,600 organ transplants in the United States just in the last one year, and 1,16,800 patients were on the waiting list awaiting for a donor. Now, experts believe that it may take years before enough is known about the safety of pig organ transplantation into human beings. The researchers involved in the project say that pigs raised for the purpose will be a fraction of the total pig population and they would be anesthetized and killed humanely. Well, to some news back home from India, where India and United States will be co-hosting a global entrepreneurship summit later this year. Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi took to Twitter to inform that US President Donald Trump's daughter Ivanka Trump will be present at the event. Now, he tweeted, and I quote, the summit is a unique opportunity for bringing together entrepreneurships and startups with global leaders. Now, Modi said that he looked forward to Ivanka Trump's presence at the summit in Hyderabad as the leader of the United States delegation. Now, President Trump also took to Twitter to confirm that Ivanka Trump will lead the U.S. delegation to India this fall, supporting women entrepreneurship globally. Now, Ivanka Trump has also tweeted and wrote... Honoured to lead the U.S. delegation to the GES 2017 in India and meet with Prime Minister Modi and passionate entrepreneurs from across the globe. The Prime Minister Modi had invited Ivanka Trump for the summit during his meeting with Trump in Washington in June earlier this year. The Global Entrepreneurship Summit will be held in Hyderabad from the 28th of November. The fighters from the Syrian Democratic Forces have cleared more than 50% of Raqqa from the Islamic State fighters. Now, this according to the U.S. Defense Department. Now, reportedly, under the U.S. air support, Kurdish fighters have continued to make progress in the embattled city. However, fighting has intensified as the Kurdish militants continue to push through. The Army Colonel Ryan Dillon, a spokesperson for the American-led Operation Inherent Resolve mission in Iraq and Syria, has said that the Islamic State has attacked several civilians who were fleeing the city. Now, Raqqa is a key Islamic State stronghold in Syria. But the U.S.-backed Kurdish fighters are now in their third month of fighting to liberate the city which is under the so-called Islamic State. And also Syrian ambassador to India, Riyadh Kamel Abbas, has shed some light on the plight of the Indians who have been abducted by terror group ISIS in Iraq's Mosul city three years ago. Now, in an exclusive chat to Vion, Ambassador Abbas has said that the Syrian government has launched search operations in Syria's Raqqa city to locate the abducted Indians. Now, Abbas further assured that the Syrian army will do everything that it possibly can to bring back the missing Indians. I'm joined by Dr. Abbas, Syrian ambassador to India. Sir, a welcome to Vion. And my first question to you is, what is the information uh, the your government has and you have preened through your sources about the 39 missing Indians? Uh, I heard uh, information from Indian side and Indian media. There is 39 Indian hostage in Iraq and uh, ISIS uh, took them to Raqqa city. That is why I heard here uh, in India. I passed this information to our government. Our government was very interested on this information and they give order to our intelligence and army who make siege around Raqqa and told them you have to be cautioned by military uh, operation. Uh, 
before involving uh, Raqqa. You have to get those information and put a good plan. If they are there, to brought them, uh, bring them safety to their ground here in India. And there is good uh, relation between our bot intelligence, bot securities, and they are high-level talks about this issue. I hope if they are in Raqqa, definitely they will come safety here to India. So, it, uh, so it's safe on my part to assume and say that your government has uh, given instructions to the intelligence and security officials to actually look for the missing Indians in the city of Raqqa. Definitely, they give instruction for our security forces to follow those information. If they are there, definitely, that is why. Look, my dear, our uh, army can control uh, Raqqa within five hours only. We stop it and we uh, give a, a safety way for civilian to pull out and for those hostage, if they are inside, to make some deal how to pull them out of this area, if they are there. For those hostage and other uh, foreigner who are hostages in uh, Raqqa city, yes. if they are there, uh, like I see you, uh, I am confident they will come back safety to their ground, and we pray for God to remain in life in this. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, till uh, what time has been given that you know you'll uh, uh, get back to the uh, Indian government, or your mili uh, military and the civilian officers or intelligence officers will get back to your government, sir, in terms of a conclusive uh, answer whether they are there uh, in Raqqa or not? Have you uh, given your uh, officers some sort of a timeline, sir? My dear, since the beginning of this issue, two or three years back, I don't. Uh Remember the yes. date. Your government was very keen for uh, your citizen in Iraq when they were hostage in Iraq. And Mr. Rajnath Singh, uh, Singh uh, Minister, Home Minister of India, called me to his office and uh, give, uh, request me to follow this case. And our uh, high-level uh, uh, security intelligence came to India and others uh, from India to Syria for this issue. If they are in Iraq, or in Raqqa, will put all effort to bring them safety to this area. We deal uh, for those uh, Indian civilian as we deal for our people. We need them to come back safety to their family. And so last question to you before I let uh, go of you. So when will there be a high level Indian uh, delegation level uh, meeting between uh, our yes, your party. government and our government in terms of uh, senior representatives. Is it happening soon, sir? Yes. Uh, look, I will not uh, give you indicate uh, date, but I would like to mention for you that you will see with, do, and during of next month, high-level delegation, mutual delegation will uh, be, uh, come from Syria and high-level delegation from India to Syria. But what I will uh, mention for you, I put my, my effort to bring my Prime Minister here to India to enhance the relation between the both countries, especially in economically for, uh, field, because Syria is the richest country in Middle East and the richest country for gas power. And so is this high level, uh, I know you will not give me the details, but indications can be given in diplomacy. Is it only going to be a high level official meeting or is it going to be a high level ministerial meeting? Uh, ministerial meeting and high level meeting, high level official meeting. But there is more than four or five uh, bilateral uh, visits between the both country. I will tell you one of them, for example, not on politics, the uh, Minister of Higher Education from Syria will come soon to India, for okay. example. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for speaking to Vion. So, Karthike Sharma from Delhi for Vion. Well, let's now shift focus to Pakistan, where in another twist in the Pakistani politics, it is now being learned that the wife of Nawaz Sharif, the ousted Prime Minister of the country, will be contesting for the special parliamentary elections. Now, Kulsum Nawaz has filed papers for her candidacy and Nawaz Sharif was forced to vacate his seat as Pakistan's Prime Minister last month after the Supreme Court disqualified him from holding office. Well, that's all the time we have in this edition of the News Bulletin. Keep watching beyond.